All right, now I'm going to show you how to add the Kohler engine to the 30 inch Time Master Toro mower. Below are the parts you will need. A lot of these parts you use to remove the engine already. All right, so here's that motor again. And uh, I was watching a video and they had a good way to distinguish which ones you want to use. See how this makes the letter D? All the ones that make the letter D are the three you're going to use, okay? But these aren't tapped. So there's two ways to do this. One is you can go out and buy a, a self-cutting uh, screw. That might be all right. I think they can uh, really mess it up quick. And when the engine costs as much as this one, I don't want to deal with it. So look for the ones with the Ds on it. See how this one looks like a B? Backwards B, you don't want that one. And this one here is just an O. You don't want that one there. So you want this one, this one, and this one. Those are the three. So we need to tap them. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my tap kit out. All right, before I work on the new motor, I wanna show you something real quick. I kept watching videos and some say, oh, these are threaded, some say they aren't. So, but I realized this one here is not threaded. This one here is not threaded. And this one here, that's the hardest one to get to, actually is threaded, but it's threaded for a half inch. So I watched another video and they said, well, hey, use a 3 8 inch. So that's what I'm gonna do. A 3 8 inch will fit up there nice and neat. A 3 8 will fit into each of these. So when I go to tap this, I'm actually gonna tap this with a 3 8 16. That's a coarse thread. And then I'm going to, I went to the store and I bought one of these stainless steel uh, bolts. This is a 3 8 by 16 by one inch uh, bolt. So I'm just gonna tap it right in there. You'll see on this Kohler, it actually is gonna make a really nice tap as opposed to if I try to tap a half inch, I think it'd be, I'd be tearing away too much metal. That'd be really hard. So there you go. I'm gonna get my tap ready. <laughs> All right, now it's time to put the this back on the shaft. So I just slide right in there like that. Put the washer back in. Screw it down. All right, I noticed something when I've tried to put that engine on. This screw here is in the way. And I All right, I'm gonna go underneath with this, put this on top of both 9 16 inch. It's just some sort of support thing. I'm not sure, but I can't use it, so it's gone. We'll f All right, let's roll this engine on top. First part's pretty easy. You just set it on here. Obviously, you want the name Kohler uh, on the front. All right, looking up here. I'm gonna put this one in first, right here on the top right. Just to barely put it in and get stabilized. Then I'm gonna put in this one over here second. But remember, there's that bar that goes across. I'll show that in a second. It should keep this belt in tune. So first thing, let's go ahead and pop that belt loosely on there. This is your drivetrain belt. That goes right there, or your blade belt. I'm sorry, that's your blade belt. We'll put that on there right real quick. All right, you can see I had this bolt on. Uh, where is it? Right there. That bolt is on now, but it's still loose. The motor still moves around and everything. But by putting that one bolt in, it's going to make this one a little easier to line up, as well as the other really hard one on the other end. So let's do that next. When you put this in, you also have to put this belt guard, which goes right here like this. So it'll go right up in there, and then into the other one over there. So. A little tricky to get a camera and two hands, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the camera down while we while I screw that in. At least get it la uh, finger tight. So there we go. All right, this one I found it easier to stick the 
the driver through that hole and then up in there and just kind of push. Maybe move the engine just a little around and you'll see that it'll grab just like that. It's in there all the way. Back it up just a hair. So it's loose, it's still on there. All right. That's our last problem child over there, but I think I have a new solution. I got a different tool at the store and I think it'll work. All right, so this is where I had to get creative. So my bolt is a 9 16 inch bolt, which with my drive set, it has to be a three inch drive, three eighths inch driver. So I got the DeWalt one and it works well. You can see that that's a DeWalt one, but the problem is it's really long. So I found another one called a Shockwave. I've never, oh, it's by Milwaukee, there you go. But look how much shorter this is. That's what I need. So I use that shorter one and to here. And now to get to that, DeWalt has this really cool thing. It's like a 90 degree, but it's on a flex thing. So you can like bend it around and it'll turn. So I'm gonna use that inside of here. And now I have a really short area to get this bolt up inside. So that's my goal. Let's see how it works. Well, shoot, I tell you what, that was a lot easier than I thought it would be. I just simply reached up here with my finger, push this over there and tighten it up just barely. You can see I barely got it on, but it's, it's finger with my finger. Also make sure this belt goes underneath here and also is underneath this part here so that it stays in line. So that's how it looks. I'm gonna to go to the other side. I gotta finish this up from the other side now because where this is, that's where I'm going to uh, put that little contraption I showed you earlier. So let's see, definitely important. Put in this one first, this one second, and then the last one third, and then I'll come back after I do that third one and I'll tighten up these other two. All right, I want to show you real quick before I do everything. So I'm not sure if you can see it on the video or not, but I barely got that in there. Or it's just barely holding on. You can see it right there on the other side of my hand. It's up there against that. And I have to keep it holding up there. And then I got to attach this other end to my drill and we'll drill it out. So we'll see. All right, you can see I got it. Uh, not sure how, but you see it right there. It just... Got it in there, snatched it, put it on the uh, impact drill, went bloop, bloop, and it was done. So that's good. Gonna tighten up this one and that one there. Uh, and then the motor's in place. We'll start putting things back together. All right, let's start putting things together. First, we're gonna put this back on. Things I can do is here. I left the screw in, but now this oil filter is in the way. So. I'm gonna have to take the screw out all the way. I didn't want to, but we'll take it out all the way. Right in here is a little heat shield that actually uh, this plastic slides over. So there we go. It is in place. I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten it up and we're good to go. All right, so real quick, uh, had to make dinner, so I didn't show you this, but basically I removed this nut here with a number 10 millimeter wrench, and then I connected the ground right up to that. Probably the best place to connect that old ground. So. There's another wire here. This is for your kill switch. Um, probably what I would do is I would, you know, maybe put that together here so it's an easy kill switch. Uh, this one here goes up to the one on the handle from, from it. To do that though, I'd have to come in here, splice this and make a Y. So I'll worry about that later for now. Um, but at least I have this ground in, we're good there. So uh, put oil in it, it's been setting for a little while. I'm gonna fill it up with gas. Um, I still have to fix that transmission, but to do that, I'm going to have to take it off the blocks and um, put it down and put that 2x4 in like I did before. So I'll do that later. 
All right, so the last thing we're going to do today is to get that belt back on underneath there. So let's give that a shot. Okay, so here we go. The last thing I wanna do, make sure that this belt is on that wheel like that before uh, I do what we did the first time, which is slide that two by four over in. So if you notice, I'm holding these two cables like this, which will keep it nice and tight down here. So this is holding it nice and tight down here. I'm gonna do that as I pull back on this and rotate this around. Uh, grab right here with your finger. It's usually helpful to get more leverage on it. Keep that nice and tight. And then pivot this around like this. I'm gonna put it up on this little groove here. All right, last thing we gotta do is put this thing back on right like that. So remember, it uses a half inch, um, half inch driver. And we'll put this lock washer back onto it like that. That is it. I'll tighten that up and we're done. Quick video on how to start the mower. So, if you look at it, this is what they call a choke. When it is all the way back, this way here, the engine is turned off. If you pull it all the way forward, you'll notice right here. See this little thing kicking up right here? That's the choke. So all the way to this way is when you start it, when it's cold, it takes one pull, maybe two at the most. As soon as it starts going up, immediately throw it off a choke by moving this back just a little bit. So when you see this, you have this range for the amount of speed. So typically you want this to be all the way over here, right before that handle starts moving up. See that thing start moving up? Right before that starts moving up, that's the main operating speed right there. So right there, to shut it off, you move it all the way back. If you want to start it again after you turn it off and it's still warm, all you have to do is go to here before it kicks in that lever again. See that lever right there? Before it kicks in that. There you go. Quick one-minute video on how to operate the motor.